thinking, let's revisit this problem, the one that we just looked at with the detergent, but I want you to see what a mini tab output would look like and how it is very similar to your calculator's output. Um, it's just the mini tab version. So same exact setup, all right? But this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna give you the mini tab output is displayed below and let's look at all the information that is coming out from this mini tab output. So let me move this up so we can see it. Okay, so mini tab uses those um, vocab terms of between and within. I know that your calculator uses factor and error, but most stats um, programs use between and within. I'm not sure why Texas Instruments programmed your calculator that way, but it is what it is. We're gonna go between and within. So we've got the source of variation, again, between detergents, within detergents. We've got our degrees of freedom, our sum of squares, our mean squares, our F ratio, and our P value. So if you look at the original file, um, again, this is the, the printout one, but the original file is all nice and color coded, and you can kind of see the darker gray um, cells here, and those are the numbers that you wanna make sure you pay attention to. So you see three and 13, right? There was our degrees of freedom between and our degrees of freedom within. And we had those on our calculator, I'll just remind you that if I go back to my home screen and let me go run ANOVA again, right? There was our degrees of freedom between and if I scroll down a little bit, there was our degrees of freedom within. Okay, so those show up here and they're giving you the overall degrees of freedom, which is ultimately N minus one, right? I had 17 pieces of cloth, so I had 16 degrees of freedom. But in ANOVA, we split them up into two separate degrees of freedom that do total out to your overall degrees of freedom. All right, then we have sum of squares, right? We had 198 and 864, and you have those numbers here as well. So again, under the factor side of things, which is what most people would refer to as the between variance, um, we see our sum of squares 198.04, right? And we see the sum squares for the withins as 864.2. Now we don't need those numbers because they are quite literally a means to an end. How you go from sum of squares to the average square is you take 198.4 and divide it by its degrees of freedom. So if I were to take 198.04 and divide it by three, there is my mean square of 66.01. Right, same deal here, if you take 864.2 and divide it by 13, you get 66.48. And none of that you have to do, because again, if you look, there is your mean square, 66.01. There's your other mean square, 66.47 or 48. So you get that, right? And then if you take the ratio of these two numbers, you get your F ratio, right? If I take 66.01 and I divide it by 66.48, I get 0.993. So it's a bunch of division that helps you get from here to here to here. But again, ultimately, if I go back to running ANOVA, it didn't matter. There was my F ratio, it was one of the top numbers. And then here, your p-value, we also get from our calculator output of about 43%. But I just want you to see that all of the information you see on your calculator output can be found on this mini tab. And and while Minitab isn't worth it to you right now in your stats career, because it's, like I said, somewhere between $800 and $1,000, depending on if you get a student discount, um, it is useful if you use this stuff in everyday life. Like, it's much more powerful than your calculator. It can do all sorts of things beyond what your calculator can do, but we don't need it for Math 43. All right, so with that, we're going to work on a different um, free response question. So I will see you in a few. Bye.